But anyways, let me just go back. So what I explained to you was, you see, I'm not so pro in streaming. I'm still learning. So now you can see my screen. I hope now there is no game. Can you please confirm? I hope you can see my OneNote now. Can somebody reply on the chat? Can somebody see my screen now? OPC UA. I hope now it's okay. So it was about, in the last lesson, we learned how BLC was sending the value via IoT device, OPC UA, to Node-RED, okay? In today's lesson, we will see how this Node-RED will send the value to the cloud, okay? And if you see this lesson, if the BLC sends the value to the cloud, can you see the screen now? I see the text still watching game. Whoa, what's happening? Yeah, we'll start from the beginning, no worries. But I need to know what do you see. I will start from the beginning, no worries. But you should be able to see my screen now. Or you still see the game. This is kind of strange. Why you see this? Mm -mm -mm. Can you see the white screen now? Can you please confirm? Can you see the white screen? I will wait for your chat. I will wait for, you, wait for your reply and I will start again. Can you see the white screen? <laughs> Somebody of you has to reply. Okay, great. Now it's okay. So, yeah, sorry for that. In the last lecture, what do we see? In the last lecture, we have seen this, how we were reading the value from PLC via IoT device. So we had this PLC in the last lecture. Can you see it now? I hope it's okay. So you have seen the PLC in the last lecture and I was using Delta 12 SE. And the value from PLC was going to IoT device and then we were reading the value in Node-RED. This was the last lecture. Okay, so this is the this is the explanation which I did in the last lecture. So we have this PLC and then we had this OPC UA and then via Node-RED, we were displaying the value on the dashboard. So in the last lecture, you have seen this one. Okay, we have this tank level which is coming from the factory IO. So this is what, what we did in the last time, okay? And we have this level increasing and uh, if it shows how much is the draining percentage and filling open, yeah, stuff like that. Now in today's lesson, we will further see how to move this value from Node-RED to the cloud, okay? So that if the values are in the cloud, you can access in the remote location. Let's see, currently I'm in Germany. Okay, and I'm sending my values from my PLC to the cloud and from the cloud you can see it in any remote location. For example, India, Austria or Singapore. Okay, now I want to show you an example. So this is the local values coming from my PLC. So if you see my PLC here, these are the values which are coming. Okay, now how you can see these values on your dashboard I have made some virtual IoT device, which I will tell you how to make one. And then I made another dashboard on the server. So now the Node-RED is running on the server, okay? So if you see this link, if you notice this link, it says HTTPS, code and compile, EUGB, my blue mix net UI. This is coming from the server, okay? So if I split the screen, now you will see this part, it says tank local. This is coming from PLC and these values are going to the cloud. So there's a little bit of delay. So you can see in the values, there's some delay, but you can also see these values coming directly from my PLC. So this is the PLC giving the value to Node-RED by OPC UA and the Node-RED is writing the values to the cloud and this is the values coming in the cloud this tank cloud, 
Now, if you want to see it yourself in your screen, you have to open this link. Otherwise, I can show you another way. I will. I have created a QR code and you can just scan this QR code. I hope you can see on my screen. There is a QR code and if you scan this QR code, you can monitor these values on your phone. So maybe I can also try. So I will just scan this just to make sure it is coming. So I have my QR code here. So it's opening the dashboard. And yes, you can see the same values are coming on my phone. And this is coming via the cloud. From the cloud, it's coming. So scan this QR code and you will see these values on your computer. So what I'm doing, you are reading the values from my PLC in your screen. That's called remote monitoring. Okay. Another interesting thing is you can see in this dashboard, there is a variable value four. Okay. If you change this, you can also change this value from your phone. Like I make it five now and you can see this immediately five goes to my PLC local and in my PLC it shows five. Now, if you change this to six or seven or four, you can see on my PLC it's changing. So you are changing my PLC variable. This is so interesting. So that's called remote controlling. So one thing is you are viewing the dashboard. Another thing is you are controlling my PLC from remote location. I did not put any security for this variable so that you can try as well in your computer, in your phone. And the limit is only up to 10. Okay. I will answer your questions in the end about what I'm using, which software I'm using, what are the steps required. It's a lot of complicated steps, but I'll tell you. But if you can change the values, just put me a comment uh, in the chat window if you like it. I mean, if you're able to change it easily, if there is no problem. So the range of this variable is only from zero to 10. So this will not go beyond 10. So you can just play around between zero to 10. Okay. And I can see that you can, you can change the value. Uh, and QR code I just generated from this link, the link which you see here. So that's the thing which we are going to learn today, how to send value to the cloud and send it back to my PLC. All right. So a lot of things we have, I have to explain. So let's begin with notes. All right. The first thing is, where is my, okay. So the topic is sending value to cloud. So what you need to do, what you need to have, first of all, things required for doing this experiment, you need a PLC so that you can change the variable. It can be any PLC. Okay. If you don't have a PLC, you can also try the same thing with the node red. So you can send the value from node red local to node red cloud. Okay. So if you don't have a PLC, you can still try this experiment. And then what else you need? If your PLC supports OPC UA, that's very nice. If it doesn't support and you want to use OPC UA, you need an IOT device like I'm using. So I'm telling you the device which I'm using. Okay. So you need a PLC, you need an IOT device, and then you need a computer. Of course, with internet connection, that's very basic because you're talking to cloud. Plus node red installed. You have to make sure the node red is installed. This is important. And if you just search on the Google, how to install node red, there are many instructions. So you can just install node red in your computer. Make sure you have PLC. If you don't have PLC, that, then it's also fine. Okay. Now what you have to do is when you're ready with this thing, you have to open a website, which is ibm.cloud.com. You have to make an account. You can make a free account. So you don't have to pay anything. Maybe they ask you for your credit card information, but that's okay. You can enter that without worrying. I also did that. 
just in case if you don't want to buy their services, okay? So I need to make a little bit down. So make an account in ibm.cloud.com. So if I show you, so you can see here, cloud.ibm.com. So you have to make an account here, all right? And once you make an account, you have to create a resource. So I will note it here, going back here. So once you have an account, you have to create resource. Now, what is that? IBM offers that you can install Node-RED on their server on, oh fuck, not E. Node-RED on IBM server. So one thing is you have Node-RED in your computer, which is local. This is local in your computer. One is IBM on the cloud. So you have two Node-RED. Okay, so you need two Node-REDs. So once you make a free account, create resource and in this resource we make a node red so if i show you here i have made a resource of node red here okay so if you are if you want to know how to make a resource for node red it's on screen step by step instructions so just create resource and then you search i will show you a little bit then you search in the catalog node red Maybe you put a minus, go to the software, and you'll find Node-RED app. So you have to create this app. It will ask you to put your ID and password, sometimes some, I think some authorization password. So you will find some documentation on the internet. Just type how to make a Node-RED app on IBM server. There are step-by-step -step instructions, and you can follow that, and you can launch a dashboard on your screen. This is the IBM dashboard for Node-RED, Node-RED dashboard on IBM actually. So you can also define what are the li which link you want for this. So some kind of steps and you can do that. If you're unable to do that, I can send you a link of the documentation where you can read how to do this because I also followed that. I can do this in the, once the stream is over, I will put a link on the video description where you can see the steps to launch IBM live dashboard in which you can run Node-RED. Okay, so once you have that, let's go back. So once you have a resource, the resource you need is Node-RED. Okay, now the question is how they will talk. How Node-RED of your computer can talk to Node-RED on IBM server, okay? Now just to mention here, sorry, my drawing is not so good. I will make another block diagram here. And I would like to take this pen. So once again, that was your PLC. Then it was your IOT device. This was used because we have this OPC UA connection between the device and PLC. Then this was node red local. So I will make a computer because this was local. And now we have to reach Node-RED Cloud so that you can share the values. I will go to the draw, take another color. Okay, now comes, now comes the whole game of cloud, cloud monitoring and controlling. In the Node-RED Cloud, in this cloud, we make some virtual IoT device. I use the word virtual just for explanation. Virtual IoT device. And you can make n number of devices. Okay? These are software devices. That's why I use the word virtual. Okay? So we will create a device on the cloud. Okay? And this device will have an authorization key. Authorization key, it means it's a secure device. It has a password. 
So you need to know what is this authorization key to send the value to this device. So Node-RED will try to reach this device. Okay. So it will have a key. That's one of the things you need to know for this device. It will have a device type. Which type of device is that? And device ID. So you need to know three things, ID, type, and its password. So once you know these three things, you can start moving the value from Node-RED to Node-RED Cloud. Okay. Now the complication it doesn't end here. You have to send the values in a JSON format. And if you know, if you don't know what is JSON, it's called it's a kind of uh, representation of data. It's called JavaScript object notation. So you have to have special structure of data. You can't just send Boolean bit and expect Cloud to respond to it. You have to send the value in this format, JSON. So it's a kind of um, uh, data representation you should learn. So if you're going to cloud computing, you have to learn a few things. One of them is you have to learn what is a JSON, how to send the data. I will tell you one example in this, but it will be really nice if you know JSON before working with cloud devices. Okay, so data format is in JSON. That's I want to highlight. Okay, now the question is how to make this device? How to make? IoT device on the cloud, okay? I told you the first step was to make this. This was only to launch Node-RED on the cloud. This is just for having Node-RED on the cloud. This has nothing to do with IoT device, okay? So this one is used to launch Node-RED on the cloud. Then you go to another website, and that website is this one, internetofthings.ibmcloud.com. That's the website you have to go. So I open this and I type it here. So you can write it down or just take a reference. You have to go to this website, and then you make an account, or just link your account. It will automatically, it will automatically take the account information from cloud.ibm.com because these both websites are together. But you have to go to this website, okay? You need to be in this website. And once you are in this website, make an account or just link the account, and then you will find a screen like this. Okay, I'm logged out, I don't know why. <laughs> so I will log in again. Maybe it was inactive, so I logged out. And you will find here, instead of this ID, which you see on my screen, you will find, okay, let me just turn off this QR code if it's bothering you. So instead of, instead of this ID, you will see set up, set up a dashboard or something like that, create account or maybe set up resource. So once you do that, you will see your ID, okay? Then you click on this ID, and then you will see your dashboard. So in this dashboard, you go to devices, okay? And then in, in this devices, you have to add a device. So let's, let's add a device for today's explanation. So you can see I've already made some devices, but to explain you, I will add a device. So now it is asking me device type, like I told you, and device ID. So I already has device type, factory IO, simulation device. So I will create uh, device type, let's say acquisition, acquisition board, right? Acquisition, oh, there's a spelling mistake. Acquisition, what? I can't remove. Okay, let's take another value. Uh, electronic 
whatever. You can use any name. Let's say device type is electronic and device ID is one, two, three, four, right? This doesn't matter. You have to remember. Or if you have a specific device, you can mention that. So I have electronic device ID one, two, three, four, and I go to next. And if you want, you can put this information for your own reference. Who's the manufacturer? What's the firmware version, hardware version, description, model, serial number. I will just uh, skip this step. Security. Now it's the aut authentication token. Okay. I have to give a security. So let's take uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. I click next. So I have a summary, electronic, one, two, three, four. I will write it down on a paper just in case I don't forget. So it's electronic. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now what I have to do, finish. So we have a device which we created. And now I go back to my devices. So you see this is a device, device ID, device type, and I know my password. So this is not connected because it is not getting any values from my local cloud. So coming back to OneNote, we have created a device. Now let's send the value. So this is my local node red. Okay. So I will take a value. Now I will take maybe a numeric value. Okay. I have to send this to a device. So I will first locate it in my tank local. Then I will make uh, maybe a new group. I will name it electronic. Done. So deploy. So at the moment you will only see this. Where is my another dashboard? Here. So that's my numeric value. Okay. I have to send this to the cloud. Now I told you we have to make a format in JSON. Okay. So I will take a function. And I have to write a value. So the JSON value will be, so I will write message.payload. Now, if you don't know how Node-RED works, I'm going to make a course on Node-RED in which I will explain you everything from scratch. So after this live session, I'll be working on this course. And if you're interested, you can join this course because if you know Node-RED, you can have many much possibilities. One of them is cloud computing. So in this case, message payload is the value which we want to display. So that's the main key value. So in JSON, we have to create an object. So like I said, JavaScript object notation. So I make an open bracket and now I have an object. Let's name this object as D. And I have another bracket. Now inside the object, I have some parameters. So let's write, we have this device as uh, electronic and one, two, three, four. So I will just write value. So value of this device will be message.payload. Now this message.payload is the value which comes from a numeric value, which I showed you here. So whatever value I put here, that's my message payload. It goes inside the parameter value, becomes the object and then come out. Okay. And then it come out. So at the moment I will just show you how this works. So I'm not sending it to the IoT cloud. Just want to show you how does it work. So now you see here, this is the numeric and I bring this dashboard maybe out. Where is that? Here. So if I make it one, you will see there is an object, a D object, which has the value one. So that's the format of JSON. So if I increment it by two, I have another object just having the value two. So we have a JSON. So I will type it here, JSON format. Now I want to send this value to my IoT device, which I created in my cloud. Okay, so here you will find this Watson IoT and Watson IoT. Now, if you don't find this here, it means you have to install some plugins. So if I go here, 
go to manage palette and show you my plugins which are installed you will find this one IBM Watson IoT you have to make sure this is installed okay this is important if you don't have this one you will not see Watson IoT here so you have this device here take this device connect this to JSON format and let's open this device now here you will see device quick start and registered okay you don't have to do quick start because we have already made a device on the cloud so go to registered and now we have to enter the credentials the credentials which we created for the device so I will add new credentials because these are the old credentials and click on this button and now you will see organization this is important this is the value which will come once you create the device which was here and this is the first first name of your whole link this is the organization so I will copy it you will also see it here that's the ID that's your unique ID so you have to enter this ID in organization device type and device ID so if you remember device type is electronic ID is 1234 so I will type electronic ID is 1234 token which I created 1234567 yeah click add and then click done so once it's done deploy now you will see it is connected now the value is 2 inside and this is connected now if I go to my device here you can see it's connected so if you open this and see the recent events now here you will see the value if I change the numeric value so let's come here so this was 2 and I increment to 3 and you will see the values coming 3 in your Internet of Things dashboard okay so if I make it 4 so this is coming 4 and you can see the format is JSON so what we have seen now how to send the value from your local node red I'm not using PLC at the moment just local node red to the cloud and if you see my last examples I'm just using the value from my OPC UA instead of numeric and if I open this one this is just the division to show it on the tank level and if you see this one to cloud that's my JSON string for the level draining and filling and these values are going to my IoT device tank and that's why you see the values here okay now if I want to show my value to my dashboard for example right now you are watching the values here six seven if you want to see in the dashboard on the bottom how we can do that so I will open the node red of my cloud so don't get confused there are two node reds I'm working with one is the local one this is the local one where we create the numeric sending the value to IoT device here and that's the dashboard on the cloud so here I will read the values so this is the this is the plugin I need to use to read the IoT device value so if it's getting complex let's go back here so we have what we have seen now we have used JSON and we have moved the value to virtual IoT device okay this is what we have seen with authorization key device type and device ID so what is the next step so we have the values in virtual IoT which was electronic 1 2 3 4 so we are getting the values here already now let me change the color so this device is created now we need to display this value to display this value in the node red which is on the cloud okay so in this node red cloud we will take a node IOT input node and in this input node which is this one which is this one in this input node we will define the credentials of this device okay this device you have to mention to display the value so, so the same credential you will use but 
to add an extra layer of security, what you have to do, if I open this Watson device again, so once you create the device and start seeing the value, you can confirm that the device is ready and it's ac accepting the values from your local dashboard, like this one, okay? Once this step is confirmed, go to the apps and you have to make an API key, okay? So you can just generate API key and you can just put some description, put next, and you can define some role. So if you see, I have created a role as a device application already. So let's say device application and generate key. Then it will give you a, a, um, an API key, which you need to remember, okay? I will not create another one because I already have two. So you need to generate an API key. So I will write the step here. So to display the step one, to display, Step one, generate API. So in this, you will get an auth key and token. I hope so. So these two values you will get when you generate an API, okay? Now, when I go back to my node red in the dashboard in my cloud, so this is my input and I will take this IBM IOT in. Now this will come, you need to install this. This will not come by default. You have to install this one, Node-RED Contrib SSX IBM IOT app. Once you have this one, then you will see these blue inputs in IOT. This was for the Watson IOT. This one is for this one, okay? So I use this one here and I open this. Now here it says quick start, but I don't need quick start. I will go for API key. Now in API key, I have already defined my authorization keys from these APIs, okay? So you need to just enter these values in your cloud API, okay? So for example, my API key is this one, and then I have a token. So these two value I need to know. So if I show you here, so you have API, key here and the token, okay? So I use the same APIs for my another device. So you can just make one API and you can use this for multiple devices. So define the API and now you see here device type and ID. If I click all, then it will read all the devices, which means it will start reading the devices like tank, variable, one, two, three, four. But I just want to read one, two, three, four. So I will write device type, I don't need all. So device type was electronic, sorry. So I will type here, electronic. Device ID, one, two, three, four, okay? All right, just click done. So your device is here. We have entered the credentials of APIs. Now I'll go to the debug node just to see if I'm getting the value in my cloud. So deploy. Now let's see if the values comes in the cloud. So I will change the value in my local node red. That's the local. You can see the value come here. So this D object showing nine. So we have the value in the cloud from the local node red, okay? Before we were getting the value in our dashboard, but now we are getting the value in the cloud node red. Now to display this value, it's quite easy. You have to go to let's say a text. And if you notice this value, just click this one. This is the path of this value. Open the text, label it as one, two, three, four. This was a electronic one, two, three, four. This was the, just the name. And instead of payload, I will paste the path, which is payload.d.value. So D is the object, value is a parameter. And I can make another group name it as electronic and click done and put this here and deploy. Now if you open the same screen like before, so if you have the QR code, if you don't have, I put it here again. If you scan this QR code, you will see the value on your screen. So I will change the value now from my local 
I put 10 and you will see 10 on your phone. So let me just check. Where is my phone? So you will see this value on your phone if you scan this QR code now. So just refresh your dashboard and you can see the values coming on your phone. I can see 10 here, right? So if I, if I change this value, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. So I have sent the value to the cloud and you are able to read it. That's the step we have just learned, how to send the value from local to the cloud. Several steps involved. You have to make IoT device, then you have to make API keys, which you have to use in the cloud to read the values. Okay, that's complicated, I know. <laughs> so next is how to take the values back to the PLC. All right, this, what I did now is I'm just reading the value from my numeric code, okay? If I want to read the value from my PLC, I can just take the node from OPC UA and send it to my cloud. So it's not so complicated. Like for example, here, if you notice what I did, this OPC UA value, which is coming from BLC, I made some global variable. So this is, oh, not like this. So I store the value from BLC into global variable in Node-RED. Oh, okay, come back to questions later, okay. Uh, global variable in Node-RED. So I took a global vari variable level, which is taking the value from BLC. Like I said, if you don't know Node-RED, I will make a course so you can learn it, but I'm just showing you the possibilities, okay? So when I have to send the value to the cloud, I read from global variable, which was level, and I put the parameter level and I put the message payload. So level draining filling is going via JSON format to my IoT device, which is tank, which I have already defined here. So this is the application which I created. So now the question is, I have to send the value back to my PLC, okay? So in this case, first we have to go back to my Node-RED dashboard and we have to make, uh, if you see, I have made this variable value. So I will make another input from the cloud. Let's take numeric and I will just uh, use it in the electronic. from cloud, let's say, I'll put the name from cloud. Okay, now I have to send this value to IOT device. So let me just open output. So this will be an output. So this is I'm working on the cloud at the moment. So here I have a registered device, which is I have to make a new one. So again, organization, I will just, I think I have copied already, no. So I will copy the organization name. Copy this one, put it here. Device type was electronic. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have defined it. Now I need to make a JSON format. So I will copy this value, copy this function. So this is, this is okay. I have a value or maybe I can write from cloud here. And this is going to my device. So from my cloud, I'm sending the value back to this device, one, two, three, four. Okay. So let's see if it works and so this is defined, I deploy. So it says it's connected. And now I go back to my local Node-RED and I will read the value which the cloud is sending to IoT device. So let me go back here if it's getting confused. So you have a virtual IoT device. Let me make another space. So you have a virtual This will make it easy to understand. So you have a Node-RED local, 
writing to it. Then you have Node Red Cloud reading this. And Node Red Cloud can also write back to this device. And this can read the device. You just have to define if it is writing, it is writing to a parameter, a certain parameter. Let's see what we did. In our node read local, we wrote the parameter as value. So we were writing in the value, parameter value, which we were reading in our node red cloud. And that you have seen here. So we were reading the value, this one. So if you see this one, I took value. That's my parameter, okay? Now from the cloud, I'm writing the same, writing to the same device. I use the parameter from cloud, okay? So going back here. So this is writing in the parameter from cloud in the same device, okay? In the same device, you can have multiple parameters. It's just the way to write the value. So this is writing via parameter value. It could be any name, you know, I just use value. And node red cloud is writing by the parameter from cloud. And that's what we are going to read now. So going back. So this is the dashboard from cloud. And now this is going to write, going back to the node red local. So I take this one again to read the values. So maybe I can copy paste here. So these are the flow I'm working at the moment, okay? So I open this one, change its name. Name could be anything. I will just put electronic. That's the device we created. API key, I will, I will use the same API keys which I'm using for other devices because I told you we can use API for multiple devices. Device type, here I can write electronic. Device ID, what was the ID? One, two, three, four, that's it. Click done and click take a debug node and deploy. Let's see what we have now. So let's write from the cloud. This is my local dashboard. This is my cloud dashboard. I will put five and you will see in the local we have a value coming from cloud five. Okay. Now we will just take this value and show it on the screen. So take another one off text and I will put it on electronic group. I will put from cloud, click done. And I just need to use this part, put here, click done and deploy. Now if I show you my local dashboard, you can open the QR code again and you can change this value and you can see this value coming on my local dashboard. So this is from cloud. So go ahead, open the QR code again and change the value from your phone or from your computer and I will see the value here. So if you wanna see the QR code again, you can see it here. And let me just check if the value is coming or not. So I changed to five and I, I can see the value five here. Okay, and if I change six, seven, I can see the value here. So you can also change the value from the cloud and we can see in the local host. So once I have the value, so what is happening now? At the moment, we are working in this mode. We are working like this, from cloud to your local node red. When, once you have the value local road, node red, you can easily push it to your PLC. So let's do that. That will be end of the lecture. So I have my value in my local node red now. So this is the value coming here from the cloud. I want to push it to my PLC. To do that, I need an address in the PLC. So let's open the PLC and let's take an address D101. So I want to move the value in my PLC data register 101, the value which is coming from the cloud. Okay, 
So in this case, I will just use OPC UA, but I need to link OPC UA. So if you remember the first lecture, I will go to my OPC UA, go to my Delta and make a new tag. Let's name this tag electronic. It's word and let's name it 101. Click OK. So the tag is defined in my IIoT device. This is my IIoT device. Exit and download. So I'm going to download this tag. So for a few, few seconds or minutes, the OPC UA will not work and it will download to my PLC. So in the meanwhile, I will go to my Node-RED and I will take OPC UA client because I need to write this value. So the value from the cloud is coming here. I will take a function. So IoT device goes to a function and goes to OPC client. Here we will write Endpoint will be the endpoint of my IoT device. Click done. And here we have to mention what are we sending. So message dot topic. If you remember from the last lecture, topic is the PLC tag. So if I go to, where is my IoT device? It is rebooting and I can take this value of tag from my last tags. Let me show you here. That it will be easy. So I'll copy this one. And this is my PLC tag. The tag which I defined was electronic. I need to check it was small E or capital E. I'm not sure if it'll work. So this is finished. I go back to OPC. It's a small E. So this tag is linked to D101, okay? So now I will put small e data dot it's okay. And this is the message topic and message dot payload. What is the payload? Payload is same as this one. This is actually coming from the cloud. So just copy, put it here, semicolon to close the statement, done. That's it. Now we deploy. Now we have to see if the value is coming to PLC. So this is the cloud. Go ahead, try to change some values. And the value should reflect here if it works. <laughs> let, me, let me try as well. It doesn't work. <laughs> Let's see why it doesn't work. Where is the problem? OPC writing. didn't deploy or what? Okay, now let me see. It is not writing. Tags, electronic, OPC UA, data type. That should be working, let me check. PLC D101. Did I took D101? I think I did. Sixteen bit D101. Oh, I have to make sure this is writable. Sorry for that. By default it was not writable, so I will download again. Because it was not writing the value, the OPC UA restrict that. So I will download again. So maybe a few, few seconds stay with me. And I will also check if this is coming to my server as well. Yeah, CMT server, refresh. So once it downloads, I will refresh it. So I'll just wait for this to download. You have to make sure your tags are writable. So that's why it was not writing the value. Otherwise, our steps are clear. So just a few seconds and we will see 
the values coming to the PLC. Yeah, I can see you are changing the values. Okay, perfect. So you are with me at the moment. So maybe another 30 seconds. <laughs> And you can write your questions now in the chat. If you have any questions, you can write me because now we are going to discuss the questions after this lessons. So it is rebooting the HMI. It's saying HMI, but it's actually IoT device. And I will go to exit, finished. I need to refresh this once. This is my link for IoT device. Okay, just need to make sure that this is also writable. So I will log in. OPC UA. And you have to make sure this is write as enabled. This is just for OPC way. If you have another way of communicating with your PLC and Node-RED, this will not, this is not your step. Just in case if you're using IoT device. So now it is writable. So this is the value three. And now you can see the values are changing. So at the moment it's seven. So from the cloud, you are changing the value. And I'm also changing it. And I can see in my PLC directly coming from the cloud. So from remote, rem remote <laughs> from remote locations, I don't know where you are sitting. You are changing the value in my PLC directly. So that's how the communication works. So we have seen now how to send the value from PLC to the cloud or Node-RED to the cloud and from cloud back to Node-RED or back to PLC. I know it's a little bit complicated, but watch this lesson again. It will be recorded. It will be in my YouTube and try these steps. Make some accounts on node-red-cloud.com and just play around. If you don't have a PLC, just play around with Node-RED. Maybe you can connect Raspberry Pi to Node-RED and send the value to the cloud. So you can see you can see the value from Raspberry in your cloud and share with your friends that, hey, you can see some values on my own server, so it's kind of fun. Or you can create any application in Node-RED, send the value to the cloud and then send it back. So back and forth, you can just have um, some information how to do that. All right, now coming back to queries. That was the that was that was the lesson. I hope you like it. If you like it, just subscribe and share this video. I hope many of them you will find it useful. So now I'm going to switch to our discussion. Okay, now let me see the chat. Uh, where do I see the chat? Okay, now I can see the chat. Let's come back to the questions. If you have any questions, just write me and I will reply to you. So I am looking at the questions at the moment. That starts from the beginning. If you have any questions. Mm -mm -mm. How can we select the mode of PLC by EMF survivors? What do you mean mode of PLC? I don't understand your question. Can you please type again? Uh, looks like you are pro in gaming. Yeah, I love gaming. I sometimes play Battlefield or uh, I like Rocket League. Actually, if you like Rocket League, we can play. We can play together. <laughs> and let's see if you have any questions. Um, what is this game that is showing? Oh, the game which you are seeing on my screen in my introduction. I think it's called Satisfactory. Yeah, it's it's a game which one of my uh, my flatmate who plays and I saw it I was like what what this is so crazy this is more like building some automation in the um, in, in an open ground so you can build your conveyor system you can have a process you, you can create something and you have a dashboard you have an HMI so I said hey I want some of your videos so he gave me the video I put it on my screen so it's called satisfactory uh, what else you ask me Okay, this is about the screen. Which application you enter to see the values? Okay, good question. Kasim Khalife. I'm using Node-RED. So Node-RED you need to install in your computer. Just Google how to install Node-RED and you will see the instructions. It's not so difficult. So I use Node-RED to see the information. And this software is free of cost. So just use it. 
from which app we can scan QR code. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Automation and Control Academy. Academy? Oh, I didn't know if some Academy, Academy is watching me. But in your phone, if you, I generally use my phone camera to view QR codes. But if you can't do that, just take any QR code app and you can open it up in your phone and you can just open the link. So any app will work. Able to, what does you, where is that question again? What does UA stand for, OPC UA? UA stand for Unified Architecture. It means it's a standardized way which most of the companies are using so that every device is able to send the values via OPC UA. It's a unified. So that's, I think that's the full form. Can I save candies in my cloud? Yeah, sure. If you want to save some candies, you can save it and you can send it to your friends. It's like a virtual candy. So you can also do that. If you play Candy Crush, send of your, sell some of your candy. <laughs> sell some of your candies. Okay. Where should I enter to scan code? I'm sorry. This is scanning of your device. Can we use, can we do this using PLC Sim Siemens? Okay. PLC Sim Siemens, I don't know if it's possible to push the value to node red via PLC SIM Siemens. I'm not sure. But if you have the values in your node red via OPC UA or by Modbus, Modbus also supports, or RS-232 or Ethernet IP, or any other way, just bring the value in node red. If you see here on the palettes, and suppose your PLC supports Modbus, just type here Modbus. And you'll find so many libraries which supports Modbus. And you can use any of these libraries and try to contact your controller. So in case if you don't have PLC, just use Arduino. They have, it supports Arduino. Use Raspberry Pi, use any other controller and send the value to the cloud. So you just need a values. If you don't have any controller, just use a normal dashboard and change the value from here without any PLC. But you will learn how to interact with the cloud services in this case. Okay, next question. Kasim again, should uh, two one should have ID device if I have if you have S7 1200 PLC. Good question. That's a, that's a really good question. If you have S7 1200 PLC which does not have OPC UA, in this case you don't need IoT device. If you have it, it's good enough. If you don't have it, just go to here. Oh, I think you can't see my screen. Wait a second. I go to main. So if you don't have IoT device, go to here, manage palettes, and here just search on the install, just search Siemens. Yeah, and then you will find this one, a node red to interact with Siemens PLC. This one as well. So you'll find so many options. So just click on this one and you will have some documentation. So you will understand how, th how to work with that. So you will have some input output. For example, here, I already have this. You have S7 communication. So in this S7 communication, you have to just add your tags. So this is the IP address of your PLC. And here you have to define output, which is bit. And you can define the address of your output. And that's where directly you can read your Siemens PLC in your node red. You don't need OPC UA or IoT device. So I hope this answers your questions. Coming back to discussions. Good lesson, very thanks. Okay, session was romantic. Why I'm not using Mitsubishi PLC? Okay, I don't know. I don't have Mitsubishi PLC, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, um, I could use it, but I don't have it. I have Delta PLCs in my stock. I have uh, Siemens PLC. Uh, yeah, that's it. Looking forward for Node-RED videos. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, I will be creating a course on Node-RED, which will have a lot of details. I will be explaining how to use nodes, how to write functions, something about JSON, and something about how to interact Node-RED with Arduino, Node-RED with MySQL database, Node-RED with um, Siemens PLC, Delta PLC via Modbus, via OPC UA, several different interactions and how to write functions, how to write loops, and how to display the value in, um, in graphs, in tables, everything. So this is after this live lectures, and I will not be doing any live lectures anymore for another one month, or until I create this Node-RED course. So this was about the lesson. 
and if you have further more queries you can put a comment on this video and just go ahead start with cloud computing you will you will definitely like it so thank you for watching and i hope we see each other very soon or just type me a comment and we can interact or write me on facebook if how do you like this lecture so thank you for watching and i wish you a nice day stay safe stay safe from corona this is very serious so bye have a nice evening have a nice sunday evening